Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true because words hurt, words heal, words help, words offer hope. There is power in words. Proverbs 18, 21, death in life is in the power of the tongue. Your words create your world. If you don't like what you are getting, watch what you are saying. Faith speaks. Faith says what the word says. Instead of speaking doubt, speak faith. Instead of confessing your problems, confess the promises. Instead of confessing sickness, confess I am healed. Proverbs 6 and 2 says you are snared by the words of your mouth. Perhaps you taught yourself into bondage. There are poisonous words. James chapter 3 verse 8 talks about taming the tongue. May God guide and guard our mouths. There are praise words. Psalms 145 and 21. My mouth shall speak of the praise of the Lord. Talk about the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the grace of God, the glory of God. Talk about God. Good evening, Fellowship of Faith. On behalf of Pastor Troy and Lady Kim, we welcome you to our midweek Bible study at the Fellowship of Faith. Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. Thank you for tuning in by Facebook and YouTube on tonight. Again, we'd like to thank Pastor Troy for allowing me this opportunity to stand in a place where God has called him to stand to teach the word on tonight. Amen. I need the oh, I need the Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, thy Savior, I come to, to thee. Thank you, Fellowship of Faith, for tuning in. we also like to thank you for your continued support. You can also give by giving a five by PayPal. Come by the church or you can mail it in. We thank you for your continued support. It's because of you who are able to do our work in ministry here at the Fellowship of Faith. Let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you now for an opportunity to come to stand and teach your word. Father, I ask you to hide me behind the cross. And Father, you show forth through me. Father, that you all get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. Tonight we're going to look at the ability of Jesus uh, through this past year, this pandemic we had. You might have looked around and thought how you was going to make it through the year. Uh, Jesus Christ is able to bring us through anything that we go through. Now you might ask me uh, to help you do something or to do something for you, and I'm not that able to really do anything for you. But Jesus Christ can do everything you need. He's able to do everything you need. And because he's sitting on the right-hand side of the throne making intercession for you, you was able to make it through that pandemic and still standing right now today. So let's dive right into our lesson on today. We're going to talk about some select passages from uh, the Bible tonight. Uh, Jesus is able, his ability, he's able. In Daniel 3 and 17, the king had made a golden image, and he wanted the three Hebrew boys to bow down to that golden image. Look at what Daniel 3 and 17 says. It says, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. So tonight we want to focus on our thesis statement is, the God we serve is able. Amen. Let's look at number one on our outline. Number one, Jesus is able to help you. We all know that tax season is upon us, and sometimes we might get tempted to fudge a few numbers. Sometimes we might get tempted to do things that we should not do. But look what it says in uh, Hebrews 2 and 18. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help us through those things when we are being tempted. So no matter what you're going through, Jesus Christ can help you in temptation. Amen? Let's look at Hebrews 4 and 16. It says, Let us there come boldly to, unto the throne of grace, that way we may ob obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So whenever you need help, you can come boldly to the throne because Jesus is able to help you. Hebrews 
13 and 6, and 6, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So no matter what's going on, uh, you might be without a job, you might uh, be in your mortgage, you might be in trouble, whatever it is, don't, don't worry about what man can do to you. Just know that you can just go boldly to Jesus Christ. Amen? God is our refuge and a very present help in time of trouble. So whenever we get in trouble, God will help us. Jesus Christ will help us because he's sitting on the right-hand side of the throne making intercession to the Father for us. So he's able to help us in any situation that we get in. Isaiah 41 and 13. For I, the Lord, thou God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. So, number one, Jesus Christ is able to help us. So, whenever you need help, just call on the name of Jesus. Number two, Jesus is able to do beyond what we ask or think. Have you ever found yourself saying you needed some help or something, or you needed to ask somebody something? You say, well, I'm, I'm going to ask them, but I'll, I don't believe they'll do it. But you never did ask them. But listen to what it says. Jesus is able to do beyond what you ask or think. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So the power of Jesus Christ when he's working in us, he will do for you more than you could ask or think. Paul lets us know when the Holy Spirit has empowered us Christ has indwelled us with his love. We have, he has mastered us, and God will fill us with his Holy Spirit. Then God can do for you more than you think or ask. Amen? Number two, we talked about Jesus is able to do more, exceedingly abundantly more than you ask or think. Number three, let's look at Jesus able to keep you. No matter what you go through, Jesus will keep you. Hard times might come, but Jesus can keep you. In Jude 1, 24, it says, Jude says, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Christ Jesus. So in other words, you preserved in Christ, Christ Jesus, keeping you regardless of what you go through, you're being kept through Christ Jesus. Amen? In John 17, 22 through 24, Jesus prays to, to the Father, that he would give him all those that he had given him before the foundation of the world. He made a, God made a covenant with Jesus to give him all those souls before the foundation of the world. It says, now unto him, in Jude 24, 20, Jude 24, it says, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to, and to present us faultless before the presence of the God of the glory and exceedingly joy. So, Jesus is able to keep us now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. No one else can keep you but Jesus Christ. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Amen? Let's review. Number one, we talked about Jesus is able to help us. Number two, Jesus is able to do beyond what we think or ask. Number three, Jesus is able to keep us. So regardless of what you're going through, Jesus is able to keep you. He's able to help you and do beyond what you ask or think. Number four, as we get ready to close, Jesus is able to save. In Hebrews 7, 25, it says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the utmost that call that come unto him, to God, by him seeing he is ever living to make intercessions for them. So God is sitting on the throne now. Jesus is sitting on God's throne, on the right-hand side of the throne. He's ever living to make intercessions for us. He, he's right there to save us. It's God's will that none would perish, that all will be saved. It says, through God's name, Jesus Christ has become, Jesus is the high priest that liveth forever. He is able to save the utmost that come unto him. So you, you can't do nothing too bad that Jesus Christ can't save you. In Acts 4, and 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, any, other, any other name, none under the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. 
John 12 and 32 said, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Have I got a witness in here that Jesus Christ can save? He died on the cross. They lifted him up on the cross and he died. He laid in the grave for three days, but early on Sunday morning, God raised him out of the grave, giving him power and all power that's in his hands. So therefore, Jesus is able to save us. Have I got a witness in here? Jesus is able to save us. Thank you, God, Father, for your word on tonight. We pray, God, that it be made plain and simple, that we can use it in our everyday lives, and we'll be careful to give your name honor, glory, and praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we thank you for tuning in tonight. I didn't want to hold you too long, but thank you for tuning in by YouTube and Facebook. Also, on Sundays in the month of April, we will be having 8 o'clock service at our Madison location with limited seating. And also, we'll have service here on Sundays at 10 at our Huntsville campus. So make sure you get out and help uh, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, we thank Pastor Troy for this opportunity to stand, to preach the word, to teach the word on tonight. And we ask that you continue to support us by Give a by PayPal, uh, by coming by the church or sending it in through the, through the mail. Thank you for all that you do here at the Fellowship of Faith. In Jesus' name, we pray, God. Thank you for your word on tonight. Father, we ask that you just continue to supply your people with their needs, continue to, to help them, Father, continue to keep them, continue to save them, and continue to do more and abundantly more what they think and ask. All these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we'll see you on Sunday morning. Amen.